al khair. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sardabla. Uh, I know I've introduced myself, but I will introduce myself again for the people who uh, didn't get to know me. Uh, my name is Fatin Al Naqib, and I've been uh, as a practicing lawyer for the past 29 to 30 years. I've been lucky that uh, I have progressed in my career, and I had the exposure of the international uh, business world. I do specialize in corporate business law and commercial law, and um, and I do a lot of uh, international business as well. And I happen to be a chairman and a board member in several of corporations here in Kuwait in various sectors, and some here and some internationally as well. I have recently uh, published a book uh, called The Legal Guide to Doing Business in Kuwait, and I guess a lot of you know or came to know about it. Uh, the idea behind this book is to, comply, uh, to compile a guide, a comprehensive guide uh, from a legal perspective and it would be an easy to read for any uh, ordinary uh, person. Uh, uh, the, the legal world tend to be uh, difficult, and we use terminologies that only people who work in the law or specialized in the law that would understand it. So uh, after my research, I realized that there isn't a complete guide on how to do business in Kuwait. Therefore, the idea came up. And then I started uh, to draft that book in that sort of uh, manner. Although, as my, my, uh, although I have done it in English language and not in Arabic because the idea was to promote Kuwait as an open market uh, for the international world to know, to, uh, to invest or to businesses. But I, I, I didn't think and I didn't realize that it was such of an importance that also for the local uh, investors here in Kuwait are interested in it, which is something very encouraging and that I am thinking of another uh, addition that it will include uh, various laws that would interest the, the local investor in terms of consumer law, which is we have a new law on that and you need to know uh, I guess every uh, Kuwaiti in Tapa business should know about it. We go around of how to do business, especially knowing that a lot, a lot of you, they may have started a business or intending to start a business. So that leads us to say that there is a business for any Kuwaiti who would like to enter or do business that being an agent. Uh, commercial agencies are very important and it's one of the earliest means of doing trade here in Kuwait. I don't know how much you know about trading or the history of trading in Kuwait, but uh, at the time of issuance, uh, the law itself in 1964, uh, uh, does this sort of transaction was uh, or were going on. And we have like old agencies similar to Al Sayer with Toyota, Al Ghanem with Chevrolet, and uh, Al Bahar with other, um, I forgot what's uh, the name of the product, but it is there, long back. When the law uh, decided to regulate commercial agency, it considered the protection of the Kuwaiti party in that sort of a transaction. Uh, so I want to ask you, does anyone know anything except you, lawyer? <laughs> Does anyone know anything about commercial agencies and how they are regulated under Kuwaiti law? Do we have any idea about it or no? Nothing. Really? Okay. Uh, it defines three types uh, of uh, agency, which is one, the contract agency, it's called. And the second one is a distributor or reseller. And we have the agent uh, with a commission or a commission agent. Uh, the law says under the contract agency that it's a direct relationship between the principal and the Kuwaiti. And non-Kuwaitis are not permissible to be as agent for any foreign uh, principal. And if they do that, it's a violation of the law. Uh, the agencies are governed under two laws, the commercial law, and the uh, other law called Law Number 36, which regulates agencies, and it deals with the process. The law says that there should be a contract, and that contract should specify the appointment of the agent, 
where the idea is that this agent will promote and market the commodity or the service or the product of the principal in a specified territory for a specific term. So the law insists there should be a contract in writing there should be appointment of the agent. There should be a definition of the products of the principle that they are being promoted. And uh, that territory where this agent is going to promote the service or the commodity of the principle. The law goes beyond that and says, now, if the principle requires the agent to have warehouses, showrooms, facilities, or workshop of some sort, then it's a must that the agreement should be for a period of five years. And it's a must that this agreement is registered with the commercial register. And if this agreement is not registered, then there would be no protection for the Kuwaiti agent. So basically, the commercial agencies are regulated in a way under the Kuwaiti law to provide some sort of a protection for the Kuwaiti agent. So this agent is appointed on behalf of the principal to do some trading activity in promoting and the marketing of the services of the principal or its business and doing in the name of the principal for a period of time and for a specified territory. This leads me to go to the other type of an uh, agreement defined uh, under the agency chapter of the commercial law, which is distributorship agreement. Uh, also, the law requires that there should be a contract and it should be a direct relationship between the uh, distributor, distributor, and the principal or foreign company or what have you, where this contract should specify also the limits of the distributorship and how the distributor would sell and promote and resell the activities or the business or the commodity or the service of the principal. The law says that if this distributor is exclusive, and there is the word of exclusivity, that means this, uh, the distributorship will have the protection given under the contract agency law. Now, what are the, the protection given? Basically, the principal cannot terminate the agent if the agent did not commit a breach or was not in fault during practicing of his duties uh, during the agency or the period of the agreement. And the principal cannot refuse to renew the agency agreement without a cause or without a breach of the agent. And if it happens to do so, the Kuwaiti agent will be entitled to a compensation. And that compensation or the criteria of such compensation is also given under the law, article specifically 282, 283 of the commercial law. It says that, uh, that the, the, the how to measure the compensation and the damages for the agent will be calculated based on how much efforts given by the agent to promote the principal uh, business and what sort of damage has occurred to the agent in uh, return of terminating the agency agreement. The law goes beyond that and says, well, if the termination of the agent happened uh, or the non-renewal was due to the collaboration of another Kuwaiti agent, another agent. So this new agent with the principal will be jointly liable to the old principal to pay him the compensation. So that's a, a very interesting protection and most international companies are worried about such protection given under the law. Now, other mean of business we find, and maybe you have heard about it uh, in Kuwait, is a sponsorship or a service agent. So, what's the difference between agency and distributor? Distributor? Okay. Now, a contract agent, the law defines it that the agent will be able to promote or do business in the principal's name in return for a fee. The distributor where he's entitled to resell the products of the 
principle in return for a, a profit, a margin of a profit. Now, if he's exclusive, then his work is similar to a contract agent. Now, we've seen government contracts now. There is a sponsorship and service agents. And um, this is a requirement. There is nothing under the law where specify that, the, you know, how to regulate the relationship of a sponsor with a, with a principal or, a, or, a, or a, a service agent. But basically, it is governed under the same chapter and the same articles of the law. So it is also protected and given the protection that they cannot terminate and they cannot uh, refuse to renew if there is no breach uh, from the agent, a registered agent, and you're doing this trading of an agent where you have a product and you are the specific agent, of course you will have your own showroom, your own people that they work for you, so you are fine, you are in compliance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you have a sponsorship, I'm coming to that, when you have a sponsorship, basically this foreign company has a contract with the government and this contract specifies and gives also the companies, the Kuwaiti companies, a venue to employ more because laborers are needed and, you know, more, you know, special expertise are needed. So it, it goes there. No, it is not illegal. Because Why? Employees. Employees their employees, of their employees of the Kuwaiti agent because the principal has a contract with the government, has a procurement. That's the difference. Now, there are sponsorship where I have seen in a practical way where uh, maybe some company has this project and they are subcontractors and they go and subcontract with another company to hold the visas or the per or permits of this employee. This is something else. This is another route. <laughs> All right? And they can be in compliant if the government entity knows that and their name is there and registered. It can be. But sometimes if not that, then you are not in compliance. Then this company is in violation all right, of the law, of the regulations, well, not the law. The you have the, not with the government. What if the contract? No, it's not permissible, you see? But it happens. In a practical way, it happens. For instance, we have a lot of projects here in Kuwait that are going on on the private scale. Private people are having it. Yeah. And they subcontract with international firms to build them. Exactly. Okay, and those international firms, either they enter into an agency agreement which we call could be a sponsorship or what have you, so that the Kuwaiti will give a certain logistic services for them. Among such lo logistics, which is our employees and an office and, and, and what have you. Hmm? Is uh, it is legal if everything is in the document says so and if the authorities know about you. But sometimes what happens, it's not legal and they are not aware of it. <clears throat> Franchise is totally something else. Franchise is not regulated under Kuwaiti law at all. Mm. The only uh, uh, aspects of the law, of the Kuwaiti law, that touches franchise is under the tax law, which is and under its recent amendment. Mm. Now, you know, any foreigner doing businesses in Kuwait is, is subject to tax. Okay? It's subject to tax. Franchise is something new to the Kuwaiti market. When I say new, I think it started in the 90s. I believe the first agreements and franchises and, and, and went as a boom and it, in the beginning it started for restaurants and then it went on into other uh, uh, sectors. Franchise is not specifically governed under uh, the Kuwaiti law. However, we apply the general principles of the commercial law on a franchise. What do you want to know about franchise? Tell me, what's your idea on a franchise? I know it's a very common business here. No, I was thinking that if you have a brand that you, you like and want to bring to Kuwait, yeah. that's like a franchise, right? They bring the franchise to Kuwait. Yeah, let me tell you how the franchise started. A franchise as a legal concept, it is there long back. It usually started with those big companies, maybe working in the oil sector, this big manufacturers where you have Pepsi, Coca-Cola, where they franchise their system and know-how, you know, big factories or whatever. Then slowly the international world recognized that there is a concept <coughs> derived from the franchise in a way, but still holds the characteristic of a franchise. Is basically when I develop a whole business, from a logo, the trade name, till the know-how, 
till whatever inner details of that business. Let's take a restaurant, for instance, that I build a name. And I come up with my own recipe. So there is intellectual property because I have built the recipes and I have built the name and I made a brand of some, some sort. Mm -hmm. And I also introduced a new form of business like in a way on how to deal with the customers, with the end of customers. Like from the time that this hamburger is made, cooked until it reaches uh, the clients. This is a process. They have manuals, policies, and they could go further than that. They have even the way you um, yeah, uh, collect your uh, financial records or data or what have you. It's a whole know-how. Now, that company or that business that I have established and became very successful and very known, so I say, oh, that's a nice concept, so let me franchise this concept and this know-how to a franchisee where he should build that on a, uh, on a development agreement in return for a royalty on a fee. So basically, he is licensing his intellectual property, logos, trademarks, what have you, the know-how and the manual of the business, and then the development of the agreement, which how many restaurants you should have in a number of years, and then the marketing, uh, the international marketing campaign that you would benefit from and you would pay royalty for, so you would enjoy the success of that uh, concept of business. One thing to understand, just one second, that no franchisor will give you a guarantee that it's a successful business. So you do it on your own. But because he had the experience and it's been successful, Okay, so is the franchising it for you in return for a royalty? Tell me. I was going to say, I think when you said products, it doesn't fall under the franchising uh, concept. When you say products, I think it falls under the, the agency agreement where you're allowed to supply uh, a certain product from abroad and you bring yeah. it to Kuwait exclusively to yourself. No, I mean, like a brand, uh, I was, and like, I mean, it depends. Okay. So you mean a product like a thing you selling instead of a service? No, so, so a franchise is like McDonald's. McDonald's gives you everything. They yeah. tell you how to cook the burger, how long, this is a, the, the procedures and process. The whole system. The, the whole system. Yes. But when you're doing a product, let's say, let's say a perfume, yeah. you get the, the, the agency rights for that brand. And so you're the only person selling it. It can be a franchise as well. It depends on the relationship. Yeah. Why? Because we have, like in the pharmaceutical uh, industry, medicines. Some of them, they are manufactured in Dubai or in, in UAE or in Jordan. They are based on a franchise concept where the, uh, uh, those franchisees, they will import the whole know-how of producing the medicine, and they have their own factory, and they can brand it. Okay, under the same name, whether you have generic and non-generic. You protect the franchisee, because in Kuwait, I think, like, you have the franchisee agreements, but they also work in collaboration with an agency agreement. Right? Yeah, 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 some of them, they would have that, it depends. I mean, I would prefer, if you are working in a retail or you want to uh, introduce a new commodity or a new service, I think you would pick being an agent because you are protected under the Kuwaiti law. Uh, the contract agents. Contract. Yeah, and if you are exclusive, you are protected as well. Exclusive distributor, you are protected as well. And like you said, the agency will last for five years. Yeah, a minimum. Yes, a minimum. If it requires you to uh, to build a showroom or a store or a facility or a, what have you, yes. So I've done agency agreements before, and most companies don't agree to the five-year term within the contract. They're limited to two years or. It's a, it's a policy, it's a mandatory rule. Uh, the contract says two years, and you supply it to the Chamber of Commerce, or they stamp it. They would stamp it. It is fine. It is fine. Is it two years or it's five years? What, what is it? Is it a paper? It will, beco it will become a two year, as per the paper, okay. but when you come to sue that principal for a compensation because he did not renew your agency, okay or because uh, he terminated your, uh, your agency early, you will be entitled for a compensation. But the law, of course, the court would look at the law and what is there in comparison to so the agreement. Renewal, even if it's, so two years you, and they don't renew? Yeah, 
you would say, especially if it has the characteristic required under the law, when it requires you to have your own showroom, to have your own uh, store, or what have you, then yes. And, and uh, maybe off topic, I'm sorry, I'm taking too much of everyone's time. Um, the agency agreement itself, I, I believe, falls also within the tax law, and it can be reducted from the 50% of tax that a foreign corporation takes. Yes. You have to know any foreigner doing business in Kuwait, whether under an agency, under a distributorship, or a partner in a company, or a, or in a franchisor, he's, he <coughs> must pay tax as per the tax law. Now, what we have witnessed uh, uh, as a lawyer that those agreements, mostly they would say, no, you, the Kuwaiti party, you should pay, be accountable on my taxes. I would say no. You tell them no. And I have seen it very much so in agencies and in franchise agreement as well. And I would say no. Tell them no. This law is for you because you're entering the Kuwaiti market. It's similar. When I enter your market, I would pay certain taxes. So it's the same here. And the taxes are very minimum comparing to the other. And there is a many treaties between Kuwait and, and several countries to, to make benefit of a dual taxation and would be exempted as well. There's a bracket. Yeah. The, the bracket where tax starts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where it starts from 15 and goes up to 50. 50 no, no, or for the, the bracket. So I mean, in terms of total income. Yeah. It's on the income for the foreign partners doing. Yeah. But it starts at a million, I think? 15% of profit. And, okay. Not a thousand KD. It no. starts 15%. It starts of at any income? Of its income that is derived from that business. Okay? And there's a way where they are exempted until they meet. So they can request for exemption or get benefit from the dual taxation treaties we have. It depends. <laughs> We're not discussing tax law here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just saying, you know. But I'm, um, but I just want you to be aware when you enter into that sort of a business that be careful and watch out for such clauses in your agreement. I think it's very important if you intend to do a business of uh, having a being an agent or a distributor or a franchisee. Please, please, please go and check with your lawyers. It's very important your lawyers review because there are mandatory rules that you cannot agree otherwise. And there are protection given under the commercial law that it is for the Kuwaitis and for them for their interest and, and benefit. Tell me. Uh, so as far as I've seen, a lot of agency agreements typically involve uh, two parties. Uh, sometimes they include a third party, which is the individual. Uh, I want to know, can the agreements over here in Kuwait apply to, from one company to another company? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, I was wondering if... Um, I, thought, I thought you were going to tell that, but he was talking about conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so if you have an agreement, uh, an agency agreement, the, the agreement is between two companies, or does it have to involve a person? No, it doesn't matter. Being an agent itself, you can be as a natural person or, a, or, a, or an entity. So the law doesn't, doesn't mind. It's, it's permissible, as long as you're not a foreigner. Anything else on commercial agencies and distributorship? Yes, tell me. Uh, when you said the Kuwaiti, mm -hmm. uh, the Kuwaitis can only bring agents. What about uh, GCC? Is it, isn't there something? Uh, um, GCC governed under G the GCC cooperation treaties. Let me tell you, no, it's not permissible. So if I, and I, I'm afraid so, no, not yet. Okay. However, GCC citizens are uh, entitled to establish companies here. A Kuwaiti company? Yeah. And that Kuwaiti company can can import? Can acquire an agency, yeah. yeah. You talk about being Yes. Well, it, um, uh, it's a good question, and let me tell you what does the law say. The law says that you can be exclusive. Now, the law says that if the principal is entering the market directly, not through the agent, the agent here is entitled for a commission from the uh, transaction done directly by the, by the agent. So this is another protection. Now, um, Recently, I have noticed, and um, 
And the Ministry of Commerce, which is part of the Ihtikar, خلينا نقول, that when an agent attempts, another agent attempts to register his agency for another product uh, or the same product, for instance, and he's not exclusive, okay? He's only solo uh, written in the agreement. Uh, the ministry does not allow him to do so. Even, even if he's an old agent and he's totally registered there and the agreement has lapsed or expired or what have you, uh, the commercial registrar will ask the foreign company to provide a certificate of clearance from the Kuwaiti party that this agreement is terminated and it can be deregistered from the commercial registrar. So uh, uh, I tell you, yes, there is <laughs> that sort of doing business because it's an old type of business and started from since it started since the history. Of, of Kuwait uh, trading, that they would have this uh, exclusivity of commercial agencies. That you see similar of the um, well-known names in the market, that still they have this exclusivity. Yeah. yeah. No one else can do. Yes. They cannot. Under the law, it's not stopped. It's still there. You have to change the commercial law. No, I think she's referring to a Kuwait signed an agreement saying that they will end uh, monopolies. Not, not the gap, but all the gaps. Yeah. Uh, the WTO, uh, the World Trade Organization, and the gas agreement, this is something totally different. They ratified it. Yeah, they, they did. <laughs> they did. It goes not, in. Still not, that, that rule is not applied to Kuwait yet. Yes. 2002 or something. No, no. No, no, no. What happens? Let me, let me give you a brief about what the WTO agreement and how Kuwait have signed this agreement. Yes, signed it long back. And it made it a commitment that it would change its laws and regulation to meet the WTO treaties and the many treaties under the WTO. You have the GATT, you have the GATS, and you have many, many, many others. So we are changing the law. However, this has been always in question. And whenever I attend meetings with the United Nations, this always comes up, I'm afraid. And uh, hopefully we will <laughs> something will happen soon. And this is not the only aspect that we have concerns, or the UN or the WTO organizations, they have a concern about. There are many aspects of the laws that they are not in conformity with the WTO treaties. Uh, no, there isn't, but there are penalties. <laughs> there are penalties on, on Kuwait. So far, we have been avoiding them very well. Yes. <laughs> okay. So let's enter and let's discuss the other uh, form of doing business, which is establishing companies. Establishing or setting companies. Now, today... I want to tackle three forms of, of, of companies that uh, one is very common to you all, and the other two is the new entry that is given under the new company law. So let me start with the limited liability company, because it's known to be the common vehicle used when to start up and when to do a business. So does anyone of you know about limited liability companies and how they are established? What are they and, and, and what have you? Tell me. I think it's something to do with the, <coughs> um, not how, how many people mm -hmm. own the company, but that can, uh, uh, personal account will Yes, something like that. Something like that, yes. Okay. <laughs> Very good, yes. Limited liability company is basically the shareholders will only be liable to the extent of their shares in the capital incorporation, the capital they have incorporated for the certain activity. The company liability will only be limited to the capital that they have chosen, which is the minimum capital required as per the ministry regulations, depending on the... Uh, on the, on the business activity they have chosen. Uh, when to establish a company, you are a limited liability company, the law provides that it should start with two partners and goes up to 50 partners. The maximum is 50 partners. And, um, and if you are 
seven partners and more as per the new company law, then you should have a supervisory committee. What, what are the basic elements of a limited liability company? It basically, um, this company, it is easy to operate and it can be established by two partners, as I said, and up to 50. And the scope of activities is, can be chosen from the list given by the uh, ministry. And it should be done in a form of a contract, contract, which is the article of association of this company, which describes most of how this company is handled or its operation and the rights between the parties, uh, between the two partners. The law provides that this company uh, should indicate the shareholder's name, the shares, and their equity should be not less than one, the value of their equity should not be less than 100 uh, KD value, and it should be there. The scope of activity should be clearly written in the articles of association, and uh, the capital for incorporation. Also, the managers should be clearly by name appointed in the contract of establishment or the articles of association. Tell me. Articles of association means the contract that you will do before the notary public and the Ministry of Justice to give this uh, company its recognition. This company or any other company cannot be recognized without having this memorandum or articles of association. Yes. Yes, very much so. Very much so. It's a template. Although the law says, you know, the parties or the partners can define their rights and how they would distribute uh, profit, it tends to be very difficult to say what you want to do in the, when you go and, and, and practically, uh, you know, establish a company. However, you can say, for instance, that how you want to distribute profits. For instance, maybe, maybe you're sharing like 50-50, you will say, no, but in profit, I will be taking 30 and the other party will be taking like uh, 70 and what have you. Uh, the law also provides that uh, this company should appoint their auditors and should have uh, their financials audited yearly and their financials should be submitted after three months from the uh, lapse of the financial uh, year to the ministry uh, on a regular basis. The managers that they are appointed in this company, basically they represent the company in all its dealings. Um, and they can enter into contract and they can appoint uh, or recruit employees or dismiss them and what have you. The law says the partners, the shareholders, can give the managers the ex extended authority in operating the company or they can limit that. So it is up to them. Now, in case they are limited, so they will keep some of those authorities to them, which means they would need to convene in certain meetings. Therefore, we have the general meetings, uh, general ordinary meetings, and general uh, uh, assembly of unordinary meetings, similar uh, to a shareholding company. The law provides that what, what are you supposed to do in a general meeting? Basically, the shareholders would convene to approve the financials of the company, to approve any new contract, to approve any pledging or uh, any um, uh, guarantees are, uh, are, are to be given. And the non-ordinary meeting, it is called by the manager in case, uh, <coughs> in case you need to dismiss uh, the, um, uh, the manager or in case you want to change an article in your contract of incorporation or in case you want to um, increase the capital or decrease the capital or perhaps agree on dissolving the company. The period of a limited liability company given under the law is 25 years. After the 25 years, the shareholders can agree either for an indefinite period or they may reduce the, the next uh, period. The basic elements of a limited liability company, which I want you to be aware of once you establish this, that the law provides that you must, as a shareholder or as a manager, you must say that it is a limited liability company. It has to be there on a letterhead, and it's like an awareness for the public or for third parties when you deal with them that this is a limited liability company and there will not be extended liability beyond the capital. 
However, the law provides certain events where the uh, managers are liable personally for the company, for the shareholders and third parties if they have practiced a breach or they have done a misconduct during their mismanagement of the operation, they would be personally liable. And the shareholder also, if he knew about such collaboration of a misconduct or a mismanagement, uh, uh, he would be personally uh, liable. If you Liable if a manager was in breach of the contract of association or mismanaged the company that led into a loss or a some, somehow. So then, then the manager would be liable, personally liable. If a shareholder collaborated with the manager or knew that there was a misconduct or a breach or some sort that resulted in a loss or a damage, he would also be personally uh, liable. When can the amendments be done to the articles of credit corporation? Is there a specific time of the year? Or can be done any time? Any time, any time. Just call for an, an ordinary general meeting. The shareholders has to be there. Uh, and the law requires for voting. It has the percentage of a quorum should be 75% when you call for an unordinary uh, general assembly. And for normal assembly, 50% of votes. Yes? This whole fork, uh, <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, How is it? Yes, I tell you. Uh, Kuwaiti law regulations regarding uh, scope of activity have, have been changing a lot. Let's say, like, uh, maybe four or five years ago, we used to have general trading and contracting company. Then in new regulations, ministerial decisions, which they do that all the time, they wanted to differentiate between the two scopes. So either you have general trading or you would have general contracting. And under general trading, you have to specify what category of trading you are into it. For instance, if you are trading in construction materials, then you can do a bit of contracting. For instance, you can trade in cement and <coughs> in, in what have you, whatever goes under contracting and construction material, but under a trading. For instance, clothing. You want to trade in clothing. It could be men's clothes, women's clothes, children's clothes, or whatever. Could it be like two things, clothing and food? Clothing no, and you cannot. Care. Food is, is, is totally different. When you want to trade in food, you, 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 it will, you will be limited to the trade of, uh, trading in food. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are certain scopes which they can merge, and you can have it under a one license, and there are scopes you cannot. The good news is that the law has uh, uh, given uh, at the minimum, not the law, I would say regulations, the minimum capital required to establish any company is relating to the scope. The new minister, Minister of, of, of Commerce, have made a new regulation, uh, number 52, um, I, it was issued sometimes in the summer, that any scope of activity would require the minimum capital of 1,000 KD in attempt to encourage uh, Kuwaitis to invest and to establish uh, uh, companies. And like for general trading contracting, like I would give an example, like Ishaya, that was fashion, retail, and at the same time food. Yeah. Under the same license. Because it's a previous license before the issuance of the law, so of that regulation. Yeah, if you have it, it's, you can still uh, so it's, work on it's it. It's good to buy uh, such a company. Yes, and they tend to be very, uh, very expensive and very rare to find. I, I don't remember, but it was four or five years ago. Four or five years ago. The good thing in my book that I have annexed uh, uh, the, the scope of activities that are permissible under Kuwaiti law, and also I have tackled the minimum capital requirement as per the previous regulation, noting that the, min the new ministerial decision is very temporary, and I know from resources that's going to be changed again, going back to what it is given in, in, in my book. The regular minimum capital is not going to stay long. It's they just want to assess how much people are encouraged to do business. And some of the licenses will be stopped. Like, for instance, Idarat Amlak al and real estate property, it will not be longer there. They will eliminate certain uh, scopes of activity, and they will reopen them again after they reevaluate and assess uh, the market. So it's a phase of sort of like testing the water. Yes, yes, to evaluate. As you know, many companies have been established on a daily basis 
here in Kuwait. So uh, uh, the government officials, they said, okay, let us encourage the small businesses to start up in various scope of activities given uh, with a minimum capital requirement, but let us also stop or seize certain scopes for because they're you know, a lot in the market, which provides a, a lot of competition that tends to be unfair um, until later on when it is better uh, assessed. So the assembly with which these regulations happen to change, do they uh, happen on an annual basis or can happen any time? They can happen any time. Yes, please, yes. Now it is the best time. <laughs> Yeah, because yes. And in terms of his question, in terms of acquiring an already established ground trading contract company, I believe there's a list of like maybe a thousand something suspended companies. Is it possible to take those companies and, and purchase them and then take them out of suspension? I guess you have to do due diligence on why those companies are suspended. They could be a lot. They lack, would lack of auditing, let's say, for example. Maybe they would have a lot of violations, and you have to look into that. And if you can't correct. Their, their, their license or uh, to make them active again, again, yes. But sometimes I think there are, uh, they are very impossible to do. Mm. They would have like a certain code on them there in the, in the data you know, of the ministries that you cannot do anything about it. One thing you need to know that certain scope of activities, when you choose them, that you would require approval from other ministries that could be depending on the scope. For instance, if you want to do something has to do with uh, Wi-Fi or networking or what have you, you have to contact and get an approval from the Ministry of Communication. If you have to do anything that has to do with, uh, with the oil sector, you need to go and have an approval from the Ministry of, of Oil. Uh, in my book, I have listed those activities that are permissible and what other entities, in case the scope requires uh, government approvals. It says that under that list as well. Tell me. Two questions. When you put two scopes of activities together, yes. Yes, 1,000, 1,000. It's a trick, huh? <laughs> No, and a GCC is uh, uh, he's treated similar as a Kuwaiti citizen. So any, 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 yes, yes, okay. Um, one thing also I want you to know. Yes, sorry. Yeah, the two scopes are like medicine and food. Like you cannot join them. This goes under under muntajat sahiya, but it's not really pharmaceutical, you know what I mean? They are not medicines in the terms of medicine. But you would require the approval of Ministry of Health because they need to be tested or, uh, of some sort. What, what about things that are new concepts? Sorry, but new concepts that, like, for, like Starbucks did, where you had a coffee shop and then you sell products within it. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you have a new idea that doesn't exist within their current list of, of activities, what do you do then? They will have you as they will give you a similar activity in a way or another. There's nothing that it's impossible. Tell me any. Sometimes you know people they say, um, I want to do conventions and uh, seminars, but in a different way. It goes under the scope of convention and having you know uh, seminars, for no, instance. I want. Yeah. I realize that sometimes like, activities disappear. <coughs> so. Yeah, they are seized for a while, and then they come back again. So you have to know. Now, now what I know that uh, real estate management is going to be seized soon uh, in January. I, I'm not aware of any other activities that they would be seized. Um, like during the time of agility, logistics. Logistics was, was not there. Available. It was not available, and yeah. now it is very common. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it happened, and you can get a special approval from the undersecretary. It's not difficult. You will get it by the end of the day. Okay. You know, work with ministries and getting licenses, it could be difficult and a, pro a prolonged process, but you will get it by the end of the day. Know that some of the officials or the employees may not be aware or totally knowledgeable of the law and the regulations, but when you come on and you show them that, yes, this is possible and this permissible and let's put it or you meet someone who's their senior by the end of the day you will you will get it now having and establishing a company may could be a prolonged process but I'm sure you know it starts with application and then you should provide uh, 
some certain cert certificates from the Taminat Social Securities where you are a private employee. Uh, you have to show then, uh, you have to contact your bank to show that you have uh, the enough uh, money of incorporating special a limited liability company. Uh, a, a lot of uh, some certificates will be here and there, and you have to, uh, you know, it's a long process, but I find it easy. It's okay. You know, once you're there, you will, you will get the license. <laughs> you have experience, and you've seen a lot, so that became easy. Yeah. Yes, so therefore you have to use lawyers or people that were specialized of incorporating company. You know, it could be very helpful. And it could also facilitate the process easier and make it shorter in time. Like now we say to people that uh, there is a, sh a long way and there's a shortcut. Which way you want to do? If you want the shortcut, pay more, but you'll get it in two weeks. You know, provided you have the right documentation and, and, and all of that. But if you want the long way, the normal process, it will take up to four to six weeks, depending on the scope, unless it requires approval from certain ministries. Sorry, two questions. What's the difference between the shortcut and the non-shortcut? I mean, why, why would someone take the long process? Uh, the fees will be higher. Ah. Yeah. Okay. And, um, but, uh, yeah. Yes, I'm coming to that. Single owner, it's, um, tell me. The LLC, you can do the LLC with 1,000 KD per, per uh, activity right now as well? Yes. Yeah. Limited liability, Limited liability company. Uh, Kuwait, we call it WLL. Western, they call it limited uh, uh, partnership or what have you. Some of them, they say it LTD, yeah, they were the Western uh, culture. But here we call it WLL. It's very important, and I really stress on that, that when you establish your business on a WLL, please make sure your letterhead say it's a WLL. It's very important. And in extreme cases, I would also advise between brackets, you put your capital of incorporation. I have witnessed many cases recently where people are getting sued and managers are held liable, personal liable, for neglecting to indicate that they are a limited liability company. And the capital in the Yes, in the yes, yes, yes. I have seen some court judgments where they go so strict and they would require you to indicate your capital of incorporating. And what about the signage outside in the stores? As, as long as your, your, the way you do your business, with your dealings, your, your contracts, your letters, your, you know, it has to say. You know, I have noticed very new uh, businesses that they, you know, they like their logo, for instance, and it's designed in a very nice way that they forgot to say Sharikat Flan Flan Dal Mim Mim or WLL. Please, please do indicate that. Uh, with limited liability. What does it mean? What the benefit? The liability is that the liability of company, it's only within the capital of incorporation. It cannot extend to personal liability. It's not merged with personal liability. So if you have debts... What's the benefit of that? Benefit of that in case of losses or liquidation of the company, it's only within its capital. It does not mix your personal liability with it. Like, for instance, if you have monies or assets or anything, they would not be they will not enter this uh, fund, you know? Okay. Only the company fund. The How company. easy is it to transfer a, a limited liability or a corporation from one person or a group of people to another? Transfer in means of assigning shares yeah. or transfer yeah. the form? The form. The form and the shares. Okay, in a limited liability company, uh, a shareholder can sell his share, <coughs> but there is a preemption of rights. Anyone knows uh, preemption of rights? It's basically the other shareholder or the partners will have a right, first right of refusal on the, those shares. So any one of you intending to sell his shares, basically you will come to your partners and you will say, I'm going to sell my shares. This is the value of it. Do you want it? And this is the price. As per the new company law, it's regulated that such intent, it should be gone with the Ministry of Commerce, and that shows more of a governance of the ministries on, uh, on, on, on companies, that they are not left alone, as it used to be. There is some sort of surveillance and monitoring. So you will announce that this is the market price of it, 
and are you willing to buy? He has two weeks to say his approval or his consent, whether he wants to buy it in the same price or not. After the lapse of two weeks, if he did not reply or, did, or refused, then you are entitled to sell it to any other shareholder. And it's and, yes, and you go to apply such, and you waive your right at the ministry by changing the articles of incorporation. And the transfer, you are saying, is... Transfer the form of a company from one form to another, uh, it can happen. And uh, when I, uh, I will talk about the one person uh, company, which is by force of law, it can change into uh, a, a company of like a limited liability if another shareholder. That is the sole proprietor. Yes, yes. But now, with, with an L. <clears throat> yeah, with an L. Now let's talk about one person company, which is something new that came up in the company law. This was not available. The first one person company, it has a characteristic of both establishment and a limited liability company. Although that sort of form or a vehicle has been known internationally and also in the Arab world, and a lot of Arab uh, countries, they have that. It's very new to Kuwait. It came with the new company law. Basically, any natural person or an entity or a corporate entity can establish a one-person company being the only shareholder and would, um, uh, would choose a certain scope of activity within uh, a limited uh, liability of a capital. So basically this company, this one-person company, will be liable to the extent of its capital incorporation based on the scope of activity they may choose of course, from the list. The one uh, person company, the, the shareholder or the one owner of the whole shares of this company can be the manager himself or can appoint anyone to be the managers. And the, the, the regulations or the laws that govern limited liability company falls the same here on the one person company. When would the one person company be personally liable beyond the capital of incorporation in two cases. The law provided two cases for that. The first case that <coughs> if, his, is if, if his personal assets and financials were mixed with this company and another bona fide party or a third party of a good intent was harmed, then he would be personally liable. So be careful. Don't mix your assets, your personal with your company of incorporation when you, when you do this one-person company. Yes, that I, I'm just going through the other one. Yes, a third party is hurt. Third party. A third party is hurt. And, and a bona fide third party, Hassan and Nian, with good intent. Um, Personal liability. Um, yes, so when he uh, appears and mixes his own uh, financial or he decides to liquidate or dissolve the company before its period uh, in order to, uh, let's say, uh, to harm or, or this may cause damages for other bona fide parties, then also his personal liability will be exposed here as well. So two instances is once he decides to liquidate in a way or to, to hurt other parties, or he mixes his personal financials and bona fide parties are hurt. Um, <clears throat> the one-person company, if, if a new shareholder jumps in that business, by the force of law, this company turned into a limited liability company. It's clearly stated under the company law. So, of course, in a practical mean, uh, in order to protect your right, we, you would need to uh, uh, apply and register with the ministry. But if this didn't happen, uh, for instance, and there is a dispute of some sort, then by law it is considered as a limited liability company, and whatever falls for, under the limited liability company falls the same on a one-person uh, company. <coughs> It has. That's what I've said in the okay. beginning. Basically, it has Except this nature. If I mix it something yes, two cases. Okay. What do you mean by mixing something personal? 
For instance, I will tell you, I, uh, I have a one-person company that does contracting, okay? And I'm an owner of a beautiful real estate property. And I come and appear to you and I would say, look, I have built that and this is that and my financials are the same. Now, that guy wouldn't enter into business with me uh, just because he knew that I'm a real estate owner and I have built those, you know, lovely buildings and, and, and he was harmed and some loss or damage has caused him. Because I have appeared to him in a way, you know, I have mixed whatever assets that I have. So he was in a way deceived, let's say, and he's an, in bona fide. So he wouldn't have entered into an agreement with me without knowing this. So if there is any damage or loss occurred to him, then he's entitled to sue me in that case. Yes? You can. تقدرين. نفس الشيء. رخصة رخصة اللي هو يعني عندش طريقة أو أنواع من أنواع من الممارسة العمل التجاري بصورة صحيحة وشرعية وعندش الترخيص لذلك القانون يعطيك أكثر من طريقة لتكوين شركة تختارين شركة ذات مسؤولية محدودة شركة توصية بسيطة تضامنية وتهابيو هذه لأنواع الشركات تطلب مينيموم اثنين شركة فيها بينما شركة الشخص واحد شخص واحد قد يكون individual اللي هو natural person طبيعي natural person or could be a corporate entity أنا عندي أملك شركة وروح أسس شركة ذات شخص واحد اللي هو أنا شركة واحدة فيها لا no no أنت محتاجة لرخصة عشان يكون لك محل to pra to practice your business بهالمحل أنت ما حصلت الرخصة وسويتي محل إلا ما أنت مؤسسة ترخيص يا مؤسسة فردية يا شركة يا دنيا عشان يكون لك محل yes المؤسسة الفردية اللي establishment she's talking about a solo establishment solo establishment is very common here and because it's a one person can establish it now the Kuwaiti company law brought the one person company so that your liability will be limited within the capital of your incorporation. Now, a muassasa fardiyya in an establishment, you're personally liable. So if you are lost, they will go into your personal accounts. You will go to, you know, they can sue you. مؤسسة فردية لحالها وشركة ذات مسؤولية محدودة الوذال ميم ميم لحالها شركة مساهمة لحالها وتوصية بسيطة لحالها وغيرها. The liability yes. So it's kind of a mean uh, that it's it's it gives also protection لأن كثير من الناس you know they have established businesses under مؤسسات and then it came up to their personal liability so that was a way of a protection. What are the negatives in terms of? I would prefer I would prefer go to one person company right away now. One person limits liability. Yes, <coughs> now and be careful and be aware because your liability is limited only to the capital of incorporation. While uh, uh, an establishment, your her your whole personal liability is there exposed. For instance, if you have lost, you know it can come to your personal assets. And but you're, then you're up to auditing if you're, if you're doing the LLC, yeah. right? Yes. Uh, also in Muasasa you are. Even in Yeah, of course. Okay. Yes. Um, and so if you want to transfer between the Fadiyya mm -hmm. to, to an LLC, yep. does everything remain intact? So uh, any contracts, uh, yes. your, your registration, CTC, you, KPC, you can have it? Yes. Remain yes, but you have to inform them that you have changed your type, your form. Your business model, but yes. You, you still maintain the same entity. Yes, yes. But you will tell them that now it's a company, it's a one-person company, okay. or now it's a limited liability company where we have two, sh two shareholders or more. Okay, and, and in terms of a corporation, a company owning, as you said, a secondary uh, business underneath it that is also limited liability, does that also require, for example, a separate space? 
Yes. Now, this is something else. Whenever you want to establish a business, you should have a space. This is part. Now, what are the procedures of establishing any company? Let's talk about that. What do you know about that? First of all, it starts with an application. This application is gives the name of the shareholders. And if you are looking at a one-person company or whatever, it gives you a space in the application form where you identify what sort of a business you want to. The second, it talks about the capital, the names and the civil idea of the shareholders. Then we talk about the capital and then we talk about the scope, what sort of scope you want to. You go to the ministry and you apply and you present. What sort of documentation you bring with you, basically your civil ID, a certificate from the social security that you are a privately employee or retired or whatever, you're not a government employee. And also, you should b bring the lease contract or the rent contract for renting the office or uh, the, uh, the receipt of paying the rent for a couple of months. Once you submit <coughs> that, you will get various letters. Some of them will take you, it depends on the scope, certain scope activity. There are certain regulations needed with other uh, ministry departments. For instance, if your scope freight forwarding, well, you have to look for a location that is ground floor. It's a hairdresser, then the location has to be in a first floor or, or what have you. Yes? Yes. If it has a civil uh, ID number, it can be divided. Yes. If it falls under the regulations of the two businesses. Yes. Do Some civil ID? two civil IDs. Two civil IDs. Yes. Uh, some places they can be divided and they have different codes and numbers. You know, big ones. You know, one floor that a lot of companies are there. They have each space that has a civil ID. A civil number, Is sorry. Is it easy to get a new one? A civil ID. So, so if, if you have a 200 meter square office, you want to divide it up for two civil IDs instead of just one. This is with the building, and you go to the municipality and shows you the plan if this is possible. It's, it's possible. It's possible. You have to look into that. Some of them it is, yes. Some, we have offices that they are only 50 meter, 20 meters. It's a civil number. Not civil. civil number, yes. I'm sorry. Civil number, yes. Yes, right. Tell me. They have to have a civil ID in Kuwait, and it takes only 10 days to give them a civil ID. They just have to stay for, for 10 days, and they will have a Kuwaiti civil ID. It's not a residency, but they would, it's, it's like they have a place where they stay. They are their resident. It's silly, but the regulations are like that. They will say, they have, I've been told that within the next few years, there will be some you know, unified co uh, kind of a civil ID for all of us in the GCC. We're merging in a way or another. <laughs> For the establishment, they have full liability, right? Well, IWLN. Yes. Okay. Which is more risky. Yes. So why do com uh, companies go for establishments? Well, what are the benefits of uh, it's easy. He's the one owner, and he can control the business more. He doesn't have another shareholder. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, at the time, there, was, uh, there wasn't any one-person company you know, in Kuwait. It's only recent that has been brought up by the new company law. Okay. Uh, uh, the, yeah, yeah. You'll be in control of your business. Share profits, share yes, yeah. How long does it take to transfer from, from the, old, the old method, the, the single to the LLC? And, and uh, what are the losses? So, like, what do you mean? How long does it take? It yeah. can be an immediate as long as you fulfill the required documentation. It can be if you are on the same place, the same premise, doing the same, you're just changing your, well, your the form. Yeah. Yes, 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 you are there if you want to change the form or the vehicle type. Yes, 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 and very much so recommended. And it's instant. Yes, yes. Just fulfill the requirement. Have the capital. The identify the scope of activity. 
No, then they will ask you to divide it. You will have a contracting alone. So you, they, you will, they will ask you to choose, actually, whether you wanted a general trading or a contracting. So if you have an establishment for general trading and contracting, please keep it because it's not available anymore. <laughs> Yeah, you're liable, but you just have to be careful, you know, in your in your in your business. I would say. <coughs> Tell me. Uh, E-commerce. E yes. Mm -hmm. Good question. Actually, I didn't want to touch on that. I was expecting a question of that sort. Let me tell you about online businesses, which is very common now here. Yeah. And we have like the social media businesses as well. Is it regulated under Kuwaiti law? No. Yes. So what you do in that case? I tell you. Basically, people that they want to go online where they have website where they sell. They have a license depending on the scope of activity. So for instance, if you're selling women clothing, Please get a license for selling women clothing, and you must and have the premise. So you must have a place where you can have, a, this is the main quarters of your business. It, it's definitely, it is. So you've got to keep it anyway. And then once this is established and you have the license and it is there, you would go to the bank uh, and you will say that I want to have a payment, a getaway payment, so either to the bank or some other uh, getaway uh, companies like CHEMS or what have you. And they will give you this portal so where your payments online can happen. And then you develop your website, and there you go, you have your business online. So you have to establish more your business. Yes, and you have to keep the office there, and this would be your headquarters. And be careful here, so for instance, sorry, no. No, it I cannot have an alternative. Yes. I have an alternative. Tell me. What you can do is actually incorporate a foreign company, which is a lot easier, and operate on international grounds, and then bring in the products over here locally as, a, as, a, as an agent. So you don't actually have to have the location or the office space. Or yeah. Even an agent requires that space. To get a license for an agent? No. Is an agency can no. be also a person. Yes, can be a person, yeah. yes. So you don't need a location? No. But why, she would, why would she go and start up something internationally? Oh, do because it in the free online. zone, like in yeah. Dubai or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, I, what I know from small businesses, like they have them online, they keep those uh, premises, to tell you the truth, where they have, where they store their goods there, and they have someone that they would follow the business online and what have you. Under the Kuwaiti... Um, uh, electronic transaction, it did not regulate that. However, we are expecting the executive bill to explain more about that, whether it involves businesses or not, uh, the e-commerce businesses or not. We're still waiting for it. <coughs> yes? So you're talking about the scope of business and how the space it requires first floor, second floor? Yes, these are regulations depending regulations. on the scope itself. Okay, and, you would, and you would know. Uh, are they included in your book? Or? No, I'm afraid no. It's hard to include them because they, are, they change. They keep on changing because and you have to deal with, the, with different regulations and requirements. For instance, the municipality has you know, certain regulations. The fire department has certain regulations as well regarding spaces for a certain type of scope. It varies. So you upon, uh, um, upon some speculative investigation that I had done, one of the e-commerce uh, <coughs> stores had actually received a complaint. And what they did is that they used the license of the parent company. Uh -huh. um, and everything else was just fine. So what they did is that, as you said, it's illegal. Oh, I wouldn't say that it's illegal since there's no legal proceedings mm -hmm. when it comes to e-commerce. But what the, they did is that they already have an established company so that they use their license. They lose it, and that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. I tell you, no one will monitor you, no one will follow you. Although the consumer law started to be very active, and you should be aware. Uh, it's hard to talk about consumer law now. I'm, I'll be happy to do another session about it, and uh, you know, if, if you are interested. Tell me. Yes. 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 As long as you are not a government employee. 
Yeah. So you're talking about consumer law. Consumer law is basically there's a lot of um, um, uh, arrangements that has given the consumer right, you know, where he can complain and sue and get a compensation, and also for the uh, for the businesses that they should be aware of. Uh, so if you receive a complaint, you know, from a consumer, it could be a risky if you don't have a license, if you don't have, you know, a proper legitimate way of doing business, you would be exposed to many violations. The violations could be from the Ministry of uh, Labor, from the Ministry of uh, Commerce, from other departments. And now there is this, all the government entities are connected together. And if you have a fine here or a violation there, then your license is stopped, your life's totally stopped. And I have seen, so you should be, be, be careful with that. So using the, using the license of the parent company is fine? It is fine, as long as it seems they have accepted. I cannot judge on that. I need to see the case to tell you. But if you have a license and you're practicing this, the, the scope of activity of that license, then that is fine. The same scope? Yeah, the same scope. So if you're trading for clothing and you have this license that covers that, for instance, it's general trading, then you are OK. Again, about the general trading, if I have a store, uh, this is my office for my general trading company. Do I need a license and another place to, uh, to work over there for like uh, a, another scope? Like, let's say, furnitures, and I want to sell furniture. Do, does it have to be in my store where I establish my uh, gen general? Uh, it depends. I tell you, sometimes people, when they establish business, they get a license on a store, for instance where they have, they provide a certain room where they would say, this is my main quarter, and this is the store where I'm going to sell my product in here. The same place. The same place. You can. So if you have a license for selling furniture and, let's say, accessories, you can might as well do it, as long as you are licensed in the beginning to have this as your main quarter, which you can provide as per the regu regulations. You should have, like, an office space. This is the counter, you know, where you have a desk and a computer and an accountant that is there, and there, there is a showroom. It can be. Um, um, I didn't witness any violations to that as long as this is properly managed. Be careful. I know some people that they would help you. They would say, and I'm going to, I can license, you know, many, give you many licenses on, you, on your same uh, place. Be careful. Watch that. Um, I know the ministries are monitoring those businesses very much so, and uh, they tend to violate them, and they will stop their files here and there, and they will come and do inspections. And sometimes it's just could be neglected or overlooked, but you never know when an inspector can come and jump uh, on, on your place and, you, could, you know, and could give you a fine or something. So uh, <coughs> be careful. Does the building owner need to give you permission to be able to get more licenses? Yes, 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 because it's, it's there. Uh, because based on the plan that he submitted with the municipality, okay. Mala. This is a, a legal question. Yeah. So let's say your contract was initially with, with the, uh, the, the, the leaser uh, as a two-person company, right? You have two companies under one space. Mm -hmm. Then they came up with new law with civil ID. Yeah. Now, do they have to provide two civil IDs to us? Civil numbers to you? Yes, yes. Do they have to provide that yeah. Because yeah. the contract states two companies? Yes, yes. And, and most of those leases? old leases, I tell you, most of all old leases, they have done a new plans for them and they have submitted them with the municipality and then went to the civil ID services where they have got numbers on them. We have a problem where, where we have an office with two companies mm. where they provided only one civil ID. Yeah, yeah. Then they have to fix their plans, submit it with the municipality. Who's responsible for that? The <laughs> landlord. Yeah. They are liable if they don't do that? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Unless, I don't know what is it, unless they could be with your other, you know, sub uh, lesser, giving him the, light, the right to sublease, or, or what is it? I don't know. So one or, one or, or the other is basically on the landlord. Two companies require two civilities. Yes. Civil numbers. Civil numbers. Civil numbers. Civil numbers. Thank you. <laughs> yes? Anything else? Tell me. For online businesses, yes. how risky is it for not having a license? Because a lot of people start businesses online 
and not knowing that they need a license or not knowing whether it's going to work out? The only risk that I see or I can speculate basically when you have an issue with an end uh, customer. You know, that's uh, the case it is. For instance, especially the people that they sell food at home, you should be careful. You never know what happens, you know, and if something, you know, get poisonous or, or, or killed, then immediately it, it could be, you know, it could be, yes. Yes, 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 and more. <laughs> Uh, yes, professional license. Let's talk about that. I miss that as well. The new company law has provided also another type uh, of a vehicle to do business for people in profession. The law says that um, two people, two individuals from the same professional, let's say for two lawyers, two accountants, two engineers, can get together and join and do a limited or any form of a company, basically, with a limited activity. Now, uh, those uh, professionals um, uh, being partner in such a company, they don't carry the capacity of a, of a, of a merchant. But the company itself is doing a trade because it's incorporated in collaboration between the body that regulates the profession and the Ministry of Commerce. And you can choose any type of uh, form or a vehicle. It could be a shareholding, limited liability, <coughs> simple partnership, what have you. Foreign companies like, for example, Amazon, eBay, all operate online and they sell to customers in Kuwait without yes. any you know, licenses or... Uh, documents like that. So, I mean, I was just thinking, why can't people over here do the same thing? They can if they want to. Kuwait is an open trading market, and yeah. goods they come. We have certain regulations for customs where you have, you know, where goods enter into the customs, and whether you are selling them, you should carry a license. If it's for personal use, it shows. They are inspected. <coughs> there are tariffs and charges and taxes to be paid. Uh, that's true. One of the aspects of doing business in foreigners that they can, you know, they don't have to come. They can supply their goods directly. Uh, however, when it's a big quantity, no, it's not permissible. There should be a Kuwaiti. If it's on a continuous basis, then he should appoint uh, like a representative. It doesn't have to be an agent or a, or a distributor. It can be a commercial representative of some sort, someone that he would carry the license of export and import, I would say. Yes. I didn't understand how they are practicing the same thing. So the license for the, the store is the same as say it's a shop. Okay. I already have a shop. Okay. I've got my brand. Yes. So if I wanted to operate under their store, but they don't want to remove their license. They don't want to remove? Their license. Okay, so you want to use their license as well? And then how do I merge if I'm already an existing company? Well, if their license is with the same scope, so basically you're selling your goods under their name, under their license or something else. So you are using their license to, to sell your goods at their store. Can I, in the signage, even import both <coughs> names on the signage? In the signage? Yeah. Right. It's like a brand name or a logo name or whatever. Um, I don't think it's permissible unless you are licensed to do so. So you don't put the signage outside a store. On their license, yes, not yours. They say Muna Tavmin. You know, you have to go and enter in a special contract with them to protect your interest. Is it? Uh, yeah, if it's done with a proper way, yes, it's a legitimate business as long as you, you know, you comply with the rules and regulations. As long as you don't, you know, don't have your signage outside, you're using the license, so it's fine. So, for instance, if you have a license and I have goods at home. And I'll tell you, come, Ahmed, come take my, my goods and sell them. Take a commission or whatever fees you want. It can. Could she put her employees at that company no. and, and hire them, sorry, 
as consultants, also as sales consultants. You're finding ways. Wow, you can be a lawyer now. But yes. I'm just <laughs> yes, there are many ways in doing that. But here, what we're talking about, what we're covering, is what's the idea of having or doing a business legitimately? What are the venues or the options given under the Kuwaiti law to have a legitimate business? Now, there are uh, direct transaction between you and me and others. Of course, they should be governed through contracts. There are ways to overcome, for instance, the, the labor uh, indemnity and dues and liability and what have you. There's ways. I can come up with, with many ways for you as a lawyer to protect you if this is your intent. Uh, Yes. Yeah, you can have. Uh, if you want to, I I I I can't see it unless they have to divide the store, and I don't th think it's permissible to do that. So that you know, so you will have a civil number here and a civil number there. I don't know how big is the store is. Yeah, it could be yes if it's permissible. It's there within the plan that can has two. It can have two numbers. Yes. You can derive a license of a branch from your main license. Okay. okay. So it's not another license, it's just... Just you're driving another license of a branch. For instance, if you have general trading here or, and you want a specific uh, scope of activity, you would derive that license and you would open a branch and you would have a lease and an office and all of that for a branch. Um, for, for instance, let's, I'll give you an example. Restaurants. There is a, sh a sharika that owns restaurants, uh, restaurants management, and they want to open a restaurant called Nino, for instance. What they would do, they would derive a license of opening a restaurant at that place, Al Al Bahar, Al Al Wajha, whatever, and they will have those employees on that branch name. But they all go up to the main quarter, which is the company. Sharikat uh, Naqib or, or, or whatever. That's how it goes. Yes, the parent couple. Um, so, another question. Can you have an establishment that owns a, a single person company? One person company? Yeah. Establishment can't be transformed into one person company. Yes. Let's say an establishment yes. That yes. Has of yes. Three yes. Or four, yes. 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 Uh, yes. Companies, yeah. Okay. Can that establishment yeah. be owned by three or four companies? Yes. Since it's an establishment, it yeah. will be. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, establishment is looked as it's it's like a like a person. You are a trader. You are a merchant, but it holds the establishment name. Uh, regarding the professional uh, uh, company. Yes. So you uh, basically said any professional, as well as plastic doctors are also. Doctors are permissible. Uh, the liability is for the company with malpractice be included in that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't advise you, no. <laughs> I should have an insurance. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Because if it's us, then we should have an insurance which is which can go cover that. You can, of course, but you would have the insurance. But I would think uh, it depends on the regulation body, the, uh, l l l l the association of doctors or something. They have certain regulations regarding that. They do. Insurance protects you, I think, against the Insurance protects you against financial li liability. Yeah. Your malpractice as a doctor, absolutely. Because mm -hmm. now the doctors, they go to the insurance Prison. Yeah, for, for malpractice. For malpractice. Yeah, up to prison. Uh, heads, heads. Oh, really? Yeah. I I didn't see that. I represent Dar es Shifa, and I I haven't That's seen that. Point. Yeah. Ah, uh, by the public maybe. Point. Yes. Okay. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. Well, anything else? Any other questions? You said uh, two professionals can come together to form a company. Yes. Does one of the professionals have to be a Kuwaiti? Has to be a Kuwaiti, yes. Yeah. That partner, the partner, Yes. Yes. Tell me, sorry. Yeah. What about freelancers? Is there a way to protect 
Freelancer in which uh, profession? Any profession, especially artists, writers, photographers, uh, graphic designers. In order, if you want to do business of photography, you know you have to establish a business or get a license to do photography. What are you protected? Do you have an association that regulates your profession or your freelancing? That's where, so basically you are uh, on your... What I'm interested in, there are lots of students, especially even uh, young students, and they are not really going to have companies at that age. Yes. They want to work. But they can also, we can only work at, as freelancers. Mm -hmm. But I'm just asking if there's anything uh, in the law that will protect them. This, the, the, the main principles of laws would apply on, on depending on the transaction itself. For instance, if you are trading in this, or let's say you are transacting in this, so you have an obligation as a trader. So will you be called a merchant or not? If you are a merchant, there are certain obligations of being a merchant or being a business uh, of that sort. In this case, I would say it could be a civil contract which falls under the civil law where you have an obligations and rights to pursue and uh, in case there is a loss or damage, then there is a compensation. A contract between the two parties is considered to be the constitution between two, two parties, so no one can uh, override it, uh, so everyone has to respect their obligations. So basically... I think, I think it's better to have a paper or some sort of a document between you that regulates the whole thing you are doing, reflecting the real life of the city. Yes, yes, yes. Do that. When it comes to professional licenses, like a graphic designer, I mean, a graphic designer is not required to have uh, an office. Yeah. Right? Uh, he needs to rent out as an overhead. Professional liability is basically for professions where they have budgets that they are regulated from freelancers. It's usually for accountants, engineers, doctors, lawyers, that sort. Now, if you are giving consultancy service like for, uh, let's say, um, uh, economics or, or whatever, you know, that sort of, you are, if you have a body that regula regulates your profession, so basically you have to adhere to that body regulation and to adhere to the Ministry of Commerce regulations in order to do like a professional liability. Uh, company. Graphic designing, there is a scope of graphic designing in the list uh, of the scope of activity. It's permissible and it's, and it's a simple thing. Do you still need to, re to rent out an office? Yes. That, that, what about the future of, of like businesses in Kuwait? Uh, home businesses license and that you know, coming up? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I'm asking, uh, what if it's a person? So it's not a company. So it's just basic. If one, let's say, a graphic designer to, instead of working for one company, works for several companies that has a person contract with them on certain jobs, mm -hmm. as a freelancer. He do, does he have to have a company where he can work that way? He can work from home, but he should uh, have a certain uh, document between between yeah, so the other it's parties, it's so it regulates the, the anything. I cannot say this is legitimate or not legitimate, because once you do a business, the only mean of doing it is that you are exposed to the public, and you have the legitimacy, and the license comes from the, from the ministry, which is back to the sovereignty of, of the whole country. This is how it's regulated, so third parties would be protected, bona fide parties would be protected. This is how I see it. Now, if you do it from home and you tell me is it legal or not legal, I cannot tell you that. I tell you, well, be careful, because there's a consumer by the end of the day. You know, he may he may sue you True. for for any loss or damages. In other countries, I mean, there are home business licenses where where they allow you to establish a business out of your home. Mm -hmm. Is there anything like that in the plans for Kuwait? Because I know nothing that I'm aware of. No, very, very no. I know that something with e-commerce and businesses it will be regulated soon. It will come up. I don't know how soon, but they are working on that, and we've been talking to officials about it. Actually, I've been talking to officials long time Good about it. Regulation. Good. We'll try to make it easy. Yes. <laughs> sharing premises to business licenses. Uh -huh. I think that is, uh, we're all in agreement that is allowed, isn't it? However, to be more specific, can you get a manufacturing license as well and have a manufacturing premises? And so those, um, 
one half of the office or the space is for that, uh, and the other one is for uh, maybe the parent company, for example. Uh, Certain certain uh, type of manufacturer factories for certain scope of manufacturing is allowed, but but you have to know when you have a business of a factory or manufacturing there are uh, only limited space for that or in or in excluded <laughs> areas that you have a shweikh sinaia or shadadia I don't know where other districts that they allow to give you the license of uh, manufacturing. Now, many companies that they deal in manufacturing or, or, they, or they want to open a factory, basically their headquarters would be there and the factory would be next to it in the same uh, premise, in the same premise. But it can. Uh, yes, but the good news is in the, the, um, uh, the industrial uh, authority have announced that uh, they will be uh, distributing some land soon, who, so whoever is interested to submit. But it's, a, it's, good, like it's, still, it's still there. The now they are, but it's, uh, they require, um, um, uh, you know, you have to have a company of a license for the activity and, it sh and the capital should be uh, like uh, 500,000 KD as a minimum. So it's kind of impossible, yeah. I guess, for healthcare. small businesses. Yeah. Zone, mm -hmm. And I think one company took all the land. Mm -hmm. Also, they, I think they have this rule that you have to, if you want to get land, you have to work, you have to have proof of profit for three years. Before yes, you can yes, yes. Apply for, um, yeah. How do you be manufactured? Yeah, there are certain regulations that govern that. You, well, you can rent land. If you want, they won't give you the government. They can rent so right land. Now, right yeah. Now, yeah, like all the HWF, they're, you know, um, owned. They're actually rented from the government and then they're subcontracted. So they have some project to you. <laughs> yes, <coughs> ladies first. Yeah. Okay. Um, like my professional license, I mean, I opened my own company. Can I use this license? Online? Like, I have, I'm working in the private sector. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my professional license, can I use it for like signing drawings and or I have to be limited where I work? I didn't get you. What sort of yeah, professional I mean, license, Matala? Uh, if I can sign drawings, yeah. Can I yeah, you use it? Uh, use your license. Okay. Use your license you use, you have, to pursue the business that you are doing. Is it the can same scope? The same Two different scopes. No, no. I, sorry, I think when you your day job where you get paid a salary, yes. that work I think you do it for someone else, right? So you can't take like the, that work and take it for your own business. Yeah. No, no. She's talking about on the rice signature. I have my own. That does the same work. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes you have. Basic, I have to sign at the end of the day. If oh. I can, can I sign and? Two different places, like where I work and my own company. Okay. Yes. Yes, you can. Something you have to know about limited liability company, exactly, about the competition. Now, uh, we talked about how managers, when they operate or manage their business, They're, the law specified that if a manager, the manager cannot uh, be another manager in another business competing with that business without the approval of the shareholders. Also, the shareholders in a limited liability company, they cannot compete with the business uh, or do or practice a business in competition with, with this company without the approval of the other uh, parties. So um, if you are a manager there or you are authorized to sign, I don't know in which capacity, but if you are a manager there, and it's a limited liability company, and the other license that you want to use for, you, for your business is the same, and it's in competition, okay, then you, they sh you should have approval. Okay, yes, because, yeah. A freelancer, I think it's okay, but be careful. Yeah. Because I think the company will consider it as competition. Yeah, it will be as a, yeah. I 
has not freelanced any valuation, I can do that for It's there in your contract, yes. In my contract, because mm. it's competing work. Mm. Even though they wouldn't take that client, I can do it. Then mm. if I appear individual, you can't pay yeah, any yeah, yeah, yeah. to be a microbiome, I still can do it. Exactly, like the, the work I do is like the, the large scale. Mm. Yeah, of course, and yeah, you're doing it here on a, yeah, but a similar scale. Check your equipment contract, add it and see what is there. Yeah. And then you can talk to them, and they might give you a return to prove it. This is still, I can open the company. Yes, open your company, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Uh, there's a difference between opening it and practicing, right? She means practicing her yeah. company. You're having eligible to open the company. And when it comes to practicing, that's where the nitty-gritty comes into place. They'll be coming after you, right? Maybe. I don't think so. <laughs> I'll be her lawyer. I'll protect her. <laughs> that's where lawyers come into place. They Thank you, Muna. Thank you. Lawyer. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I want to announce uh, something for uh, the small businesses that in the firm we are providing special packages at a very discounted rate. And it's the idea behind it to encourage you guys when you want to open a business or you have a business that when you need a lawyer that you will find a lawyer and you will find a <coughs> reputable firm with you. And the packages are very discounted rate. Please do send us an email. Tell us what you need. And immediately we'll respond where we uh, respond with a package for you. And we can discuss uh, other issues if you need a lawyer. Uh, you do corporate law only, huh? I do business, corporate law, and law, family law. I don't do. You, okay. You. Criminal cases only related to the business. Mm. Yes, I have my business card here, and we have uh, the book that we are going to give away today uh, because I'm here with Sir Dablab, and thank you so much, Muna, for having me. Uh, and uh, we'll be happy to do more session. The idea of this, just to, to see how, how, if you are interested in what we are uh, presenting here in Sir Dablab, we'll be happy to tackle more sessions in various aspects of law, depending on your need and your inquiry. Please send emails to Sardab Lab asking them if you need more sessions in certain area. We'll be happy to do more. Uh, perhaps um, uh, we talked about uh, to have one of our office in the department of setting up businesses where we have mendubs. The administrative staff will tell you how to tackle ministry officials and where to go and what to do. Uh, I think this, uh, this side it would be very helpful. I would like to also tackle intellectual property, trademarks, and logos, because I know you newcomers in the business, you have this idea of your new logos, and, and, and you are being very creative in it. I want to tell you, watch out. Be careful. <laughs> Maybe in the next session we'll talk about that uh, too. Um, where else I want to talk also about labor law in the private sector because I know a lot of you are in the private sector and you don't know your rights and regulations and when your duties and especially end of services and you have the HR doing the calculation for you and you don't know your rights. Well, we're here to help you. Yeah. 22%. That's what you get. After how many years? After how many years? Five years. Don't worry. No. <laughs> Equities lose their indemnity because the government... The government, them. yes. But there's a law that says that they have to have the social security. Yeah. Yes, yes. But, but, but in the private indemnity. law, no, no, they're giving their indemnity. But it's, I heard uh, they're, they're saying that, no, we paid your... your no, 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 they're so not in touch. Please read labor law in the private sector. It's there in my book. Please look at it. You will know. It doesn't differentiate between a Kuwaiti and a non-Kuwaiti. It is for, the, for, for uh, employees in the private sector. They have the same rights and obligations. The only difference that the Kuwaitis, they will get the security support from Al Amala from the government, and they will get also the social security contribution. Uh, that's the only privilege, uh, privileges they have. Uh, other than that, all rights and the duties are the same. Does indemnity move between companies? I'm not tackling labor law. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering. It doesn't move? So if you work yes, one, yes, it does move, of course. Move. So the indemnity, no, it doesn't move. If you're in a private sector and going in another private sector, you end your services here and then you enter. Oh. Your social securities Continue. will be continued, yes, definitely. I have my business card there. 
Thank you very much, Fatin. Thank you. I really appreciate the support you. Our thank you. I hope I have been a help. There thank you. you. That's so sweet okay. of you. Ah, thank you. Hey, you guys might be wondering what's the Dabla Bis. Some of you here uh, should at least already know what it is. So I'll just give you a quick brief. Uh, Sardab Lab uh, uh, works on three platforms. So first of all, we have the co-working space itself. So you're going to be able to use the space to work out of. We're open 24-7. You get the uh, co-working space, which is 30 KD per month. And then you get the dedicated space, if you'd like it, 100 KD per month. Of course, on top of that, we have the mentorship sessions that we offer. We have mentors from all over, all over Kuwait, even abroad, in the Silicon Valley, and even in Canada and everywhere else. So you can sit down one-on-one -on -one sessions with them by purchasing add-on services on top of the uh, co-working space. And of course, in general, we have events, awesome events like these, hosting awesome people like Fatin. Oh, and you, you get to really uh, engage with the community, network with people, and of course, learn a lot of uh, technical skills on top of just engaging society and being really social. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Before you leave, please take a copy from my book. We're giving it away for free for Sardab Lab. Hello, my name is Yusuf Al Hadidi. Uh, I'm attending this uh, lecture because uh, I, I also have my little manufacturing uh, startup company. So this was a great idea uh, to uh, uh, to know the ins and outs of uh, some uh, of the of the legal uh, aspects of uh, Kuwaiti uh, uh, Kuwait um, and opening up a business uh, here. Um, uh, there it was very insightful. Uh, the uh, the lecture was done uh, very professionally, and great questions uh, were asked. So uh, my experience uh, was uh, I was very pleased, and I will be looking forward to coming back again for anything else. Thank you. All right. Well, today we had our legal session with uh, lawyer Fatin Al Naqib here at uh, Sirdab Lab, and it was uh, definitely um, worthwhile. Because for someone or anyone who wants to set up a business in Kuwait, it's good to know their commercial law. It's good to know how to set up the businesses here and whatnot. So uh, it was definitely worthwhile. It was worth it. Um, I also encourage anyone and everybody, whoever wants to start a business anywhere, be it Kuwait or anywhere else, to know your laws, know how to do it, and uh, check with your lawyers always. So uh, thank you, Sardab Lab. And, uh, of course, our gratitude and thanks go to... Uh, Lawyer Fatin Al Naqib, thank you. Uh, we're here with um, yes, uh, Fatin Naqib. Uh, she gave a, a small, let's say, lecture, uh, two hours, regarding uh, uh, what are the laws that are required to know if you want to open a business in Kuwait. It was very informative. Um, There's a lot of participation and um, really enjoyed uh, being here at Sardab Labs. Thank you. I enjoyed uh, being here with Sir Dab Lab. I love the experience so much. The interaction with the attendees are uh, great. I don't know if they are members or not, but I do encourage people to be members at Sir Dab Lab. It's a place that I have never seen before, a place where open for, uh, for uh, to assist uh, small entrepreneurs and to understand a lot of aspects of how to do business and date their other needs. Uh, it's very interesting and I have enjoyed my session and I'm looking forward for more sessions to come. Thank you so much.